Hey, KNF family, what's happening, man? Here we are, man, the Clucky Pluckers Ranch, man, once again, you know, coming to you living KNF styly. You know, we're coming to you to share some of the great processes. Uh, first of all, I want to give credit to Jonathan Traxler, you know, um, uh, from Facebook. Uh, he's, he's a great brother, man, and he and he posted up some paperwork talking about uh, using uh, the citric acid to get the rest of the... Uh, of the phosphate out of a out of our bone char you know so uh yeah we make that wcap the water the water soluble calcium phosphate the, the vinegar only takes so much of that out of the bones you know and and it's a good process and, and i don't want to tamper with that but what i do now is is, is do it like a secondary extraction so so this has been going for about 10 days, actually a little bit more than that. Um, it's actually more than 10% bones, and, and thus, I, this is actually the second extraction I've done. And because there's so much bones in there, you look, it still bubbles like crazy if I jig it. it it's still, there was so much bone in there, it was still having a great reaction. So this will be a great solution. And then, and so I'm just gonna pour the extra off here. And now for a half gallon, Jonathan um, doing his uh, scientific calculations, mathematical calculations, he came to uh, 47 and a half grams of citric acid. So I've got this citric acid food grade powder. I think I found this on Etsy or something. And uh, you can actually do quite a few things with that. A lot of times they use it in uh, canning tomatoes and stuff. You can even find it in grocery stores if you just want to get a little bit, but it's ridiculously expensive for the little bit. This is probably a lifetime supply for me. So we need 47 and a half grams of this. Going. All right, so here we, so we got this, uh, this is a food grade citric acid. And what we're gonna do is uh, mix 47 and a half grams with that per half gallon of vinegar. Well, it's gonna be a little bit less than a half gallon because all the bones are there but I think it'll be fine there we go so 47 and a half grams per half gallon of vinegar And I think it's best to just use a, just a regular plain white vinegar for these processes. A living vinegars tend to start growing stuff um, with these, and I don't think that we necessarily always need to be culturing something on our stuff. So, yeah, I recommend uh, using just a good white vinegar, decent white vinegar. A lot of times the dollar stores has it. Oops, a little too much. All right, 47 grams there. That'll be fine with the bones. So then I, what I do is I just mix, I put this in here, and then I take some of the vinegar and get this into solution before I get it into the, uh, into the mix there. And the interesting thing about this is that um, later, like it'll grow crystals on these bones. I'll take some pictures of it if it does it again. The last time I did this, it grew all these really crazy looking like white crystals on the bones. And then after this process, what I do then is I crush these up and these become part of my living humus layer, which I'm gonna do another uh, another vibe on that because I've got some new tricks uh, I learned. So, so you can see that's just totally now dissolved pretty much. That's in solution now. So now we can add this to our bones. I'll pour ahead a little, just pour a little more plain vinegar in here to uh, clean out any residues. Bop, bop, bop. And now we'll just top it off. And we just fill it right the way up. This won't have any kind of crazy reaction. It's already been exposed to a bunch of the bones, never really go too nutty. But I think, by from past experience, we should see some fresh reaction happening somewhat i'm not sure i'm gonna forget how long it took to see something but yeah i just seen some let's see if we see what happens i don't know 
it's much noticeable. I don't remember. It's been some months since I did this, but this is a great, you know, I call this this kind of stuff KNF expanded tech. I mean, we're expanding on the basic KNF technology using the principles that we were given by Master Cho and then science and education that we receive from uh, people in situations we encounter, right? So this is a great one, I think. Um, you know, give, the more we can get, the more uses out of something for very little input, what a great idea. Um, certainly if you just crush that up and mix that into your soil, uh, the plants eventually are going to uh, extract what's left in there. But um, this is a way to just speed up that process. And right now this is a great time for transition, right? We're in our transition. This is a solution you should be mixing with your FFJ now. Or maybe if you have some transitioning uh, FPJs, like from plants that were going into bud. You know, or once your plants start making like nice little crowns, you know, you start using uh, FPJs made from like flowers and stuff like that, you know, and then we move on into our fruits, you know, right? Or, or, or vegetables or whatever, you know, final stage things, right? So, uh, yeah, so this is a great thing to use. It's our structure, it helps our plant maintain a healthy structure, it helps set good healthy branches that uh, will hold up those heavy frosty nuggets, you know, or or tomatoes or fruits or whatever else. Um, very useful, you know, so uh, keep our hearts in our head. KNF Expanded Tech, man. Thanks to Jonathan Traxler for the science. Yeah, I can see it starting to do some little something. It's like bubbles building up on the material. There's those little micro bubbles building up on it. It's trippy stuff is happening already. You see like all these bubbles building up here. Look here, can you see if it shows that? And it's starting to, yeah, all this bubble is building up on the material. And, and what happened before is like it, it all just turned into all these crazy crystals, man. So we'll see, you know. And when I and when I um and when I did my final extraction, what I did with that is I I took a, like a, a wooden thing and I mashed it all up a bunch to get those crystals and stuff all sort of broken off of that a lot. And um, you know, I'm still using it. Oh, and by the way, when you're using this, man. Use this a little more sparingly, man. It, it, because of the citric acid addition, it, it, it's a little more, maybe like one, one to 1,500 or one to 2,000, yeah? Don't go one to 1,000, one to 500 with this solution, you know? Um, it can be strong, so just be mindful of that, okay? Um, and I always recommend, personally, um, I'm always going one to 1,000 or more um, in my containers and even in the greenhouse, man, I've, I've, even in the ground, I've just found the plants. If you're making good solutions and stuff, man, I mean, you can go like the full strength vibe in, 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 in the soil, they're probably gonna handle it just fine. But I've also found that um, the plants really respond to pretty light doses of the stuff. If you have lots of good organic matter in place, you know, lots of good organic matter um, is, is a key component. If you don't have that, then I don't know. But that is a key component, organic matter. This is a killer, look at the wood chip pile, man, I got. These are killer wood chips, man. I've been out there trying to dig holes in it and stir it up as I'm applying it. Because I swear it's like fermenting inside. And I don't want it to get anaerobic, you know. But it, I can see the fungal growth in there has just exploded in two days. That thing is probably 120, 130 degrees inside. So I keep like digging holes in it and popping it around, trying to move it around a little bit as I'm distributing it. But uh, all right, bless up, you guys. Hearts in your head, k and f Styley. Expanded tech, man. Yeah, utilize your, your material to the utmost. And you know how I char my bones is just in this little paint can. I just popped a few holes in the lid. I pack my bones or my hemp can stocks in there or whatever, wood chips, and turn it upside down on a concrete surface and pack bricks around it, build a fire in and around it. And you start from the top, and it only takes about 30, 45 minutes, maybe an hour, and boom, you got, you got a gallon of char, you know? <laughs> so, all right, bless.